Hello and welcome back to the CCNA journey with me, Ryan. And in this section, we're going to continue with the last videos for the networking fundamentals, focusing on the wireless principles, reviewing SSIDs, radio frequencies, and encryptions. For those who don't know, you can contact me here on YouTube, on LinkedIn, Facebook, and follow on Twitter. Okay, so what do you have to know about wireless networks? See, this is a new topic that has come into the CCNA, and they've introduced it into the CCNA primarily because we're seeing more and more wireless networks, and it's important that engineers come into the networking field with a basic understanding of wireless terminology and what to expect when they're dealing with wireless. Obviously, previously, this was its own CCNA track and CCMP track. Well, you can still specialize this at later in your career, but for now at the CCNA, they want everyone to understand the basic terminologies of wireless networks. So let's get into it. Let's find out what we need to know about wireless networks. Now, first of all, we need to understand the terminology of access points. Now, access points is something that we spoke about already in our infrastructure uh, class when we went over all the device roles in the network, and that's kind of a few videos back. But an access point, for those who've not watched that video, is effectively a dedicated device that allows our wireless uh, stations, whether that's phones, laptops, tablets, to communicate with a central network through radio frequencies. Now, an access point is normally referred to, uh, it's normally refer called an access point when it's a dedicated device. Now, again, something we talked about in the previous videos, but your home router, for example, is a router, a switch, and a wireless. It allows you to connect multiple devices into it. It has wireless connectivity. It performs functions like NAT, like DHCP, and gives you connectivity to the LAN and to the WAN. So this is normally something that you have at home. Well, in an enterprise environment where we have, let's say, the edge of the router, we have some distribution switches, and then down from the distribution switches, we have access switches. Well, normally what we have here is we have access points, which are dedicated devices that hang off the back of the access. And ultimately what they allow us to do is extend the access into our network through the use of radio frequencies in turn of kind of wireless transmission. And these are dedicated devices that are normally surveyed in your building to find out the best location for them. And then they're normally installed and they're connected back into the access switch through ethernet cables. And effectively we're creating a central point for our devices to connect to. Now these access points themselves can communicate in different ways and be set up in different ways. They can be set up in something called a HANOC, an infrastructure and a mesh. Now just to kind of go over what this means, well ad hoc is essentially where your PC communicates directly to each other using wireless. Now this doesn't happen today. In fact, a lot of devices don't even support this anymore, but effectively what this allows you to do is to have a wireless um, connection, let's say from one laptop to another laptop with no access point. So it's literally just a communication as if you ran a cable between the two devices. So that's kind of not used as much anymore. And the reason that was originally um, invented was because we had this thing called the 80-20 split, where 80% of the traffic was on the LAN, 20% was on the WAN. Well, as more and more things went to the internet and to the cloud and less things needed to actually be on-prem and less reason to communicate on-prem, these have very much switched roles where 80% is now on the WAN and 20% is now on the LAN. So because of that, that's kind of killed out the reason for ad hoc and the main one that's being used today are infrastructure and mesh. Infrastructure is kind of what I've just described really, which is effectively the um, central access point and device devices connect off this access point through uh, wireless frequencies and they're able to communicate to each other through this access point. That is infrastructure, very simple, probably what you're doing at home right now. And mesh, Mesh is essentially where we have multiple access points communicating together. And what I mean by that, just to sort of be clear actually, is let's say 
let's say for example, let me just draw it a little bit different so we know we're talking about access points. Let's say for example, we have um, a few access points here. And this access point connects into a switch. And let's also say that there's a cable from here, from this access point to that switch. But these access points down here cannot be plugged into a switch because maybe it's too far away. Well, what we can do here is we can effectively create what we call a mesh between these access points. And maybe this mesh covers a very large area. Um, I don't know, let's just say like a football stadium. And effectively, what this allows us to do is have users down here connect to any of these access points inside the mesh, and it will relay the request back to an access point that has connectivity to the rest of the internet, let's say, for example. So effectively, a mesh is when we have multiple APs working together to complete one network, but not all APs are able to connect back to the switch. Infrastructure is where we have a centrally managed access point, maybe multiple access points, but effectively they all connect back to the switch. And that's a key thing to know. Infrastructure, all APs connect to switches. A mesh, a mesh is where one AP may have to use another AP to connect back to the network. And ad hoc is where no AP is used and the communication happens between the devices, i.e. between laptops, between phones, for example. And then the other terminology that's worth knowing when we talk about APs is antennas and transceivers. Antennas, I mean, we all kind of know what an antenna is. It's, of course, when we think about um, like your home router again, you may have a little antenna that comes off the side. Uh, now, this is not always true, but you tend to see more antennas or more expensive devices. And you may even see things like, for example, your laptop. The antenna itself is probably up built into the side of the screen. That's a common place for an antenna. Um, but ultimately, more antennas tend to mean better um, Wi-Fi, not necessarily. They're, they're, you know, crap antennas, then you're going to get crap Wi-Fi. So it doesn't matter about the quality. But yeah, effectively, more antennas, uh, better Wi-Fi. And lastly, we need to talk about transceivers, which effectively power the antennas and give them the ability to send data or receive data. Key thing here is the word or and not the word and. The reason being, and would imply that we have full duplex, which means we can send and receive, or implies that we can send or receive, which means half duplex. And Wi-Fi works at half duplex. So transceivers allows us to receive and send data, but not at the same time. Antennas are the obviously what actually admits the radio frequencies and then the ad hoc infrastructure and mesh are different types of ways that the access points can effectively be set up. Or in the case of ad hoc, the kind of the way the devices can communicate directly without the need for an access point. Next, we need to talk about the terminology used in Wi-Fi, which is not used in other um, other areas, and this is kind of a little bit frustrating because it's kind of a typical world of IT, really. Um, there's 101 names for the same thing, and the reason there was always lots of names for the same things is because we deal with lots of te different technologies, and you end up learning more technologies, more things are called different names in different technologies. Um, so, for example, throughout this course, I've been using the terminology endpoints, which refer to kind of PCs, uh, tablets, some people will call these host, for example, host, because that's where you actually are, you're a host. Um, well, in wireless terminology, we call them stations. So a station is anything that can, can connect to a wireless network. So mobiles, laptop, tablets, or internet of things, that can all connect to some sort of wireless um, network. And when it is connected to the wireless network, the correct terminology is a station. And the reason it's important to know that we call them stations is because obviously as we move into the world of wireless and we start getting asked wireless questions from uh, Cisco, we're going to start to see the correct terminology used for those questions. And if you're not sure what the word station means, well, really simple. It just means um, mobiles, tablets, anything that connects to the wireless network. Real simple.
So radial frequencies are RF. This is effectively how the access points communicate to the stations and the stations to the access points. And we talked about uh, previously this concept of raising the voltage and lowering the voltage. So for example, let's say we have a PC and the PC connects into a switch. And let's say this is a copper ethernet cable. Well, what we've discussed previously is that as the communication leaves the network interface card on the PC, it will be a series of kind of voltage levels. And each of these voltage levels will indicate a zero or a one. And maybe for example, every time the voltage increases a one, and every time the voltage decreases, it's a, sorry, every time the voltage increases a zero, every time it decreases is a one. That's a good example. And effectively the RF is gonna be the same. It's gonna be this radial wave of frequencies. And as the frequency kind of manipulates, it's able to encode whether it's a zero or whether it's a one. And in turn, they're able to communicate wirelessly across the air using uh, radial frequencies. Well, inside this kind of frequency, there is kind of two, um, inside this kind of spectrum of uh, frequencies, there's two we need to be kind of familiar with for the CCNA, and that's 2.4 and 5. Now, 2.4 is effectively kind of a, in a, a raw sense of it, a longer distance signal, so it can travel further. Um, but the further it travels, the kind of weaker the, the information is as it reaches its endpoint. Whereas five can't travel as far, but it's a stronger signal. So you end up with kind of better speeds when it comes to five versus when it comes to 2.4. So kind of when we talk about radial frequencies, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the 2.4 and the five gigahertz that's being used in radial frequencies of wireless networks today. And the last thing to talk about is the type standards or versions. And what I mean by that is effectively underneath wireless, wireless has evolved over time since the late 90s all the way up to the present day. Even this year, a new Wi-Fi standard, Wi-Fi 6, just came out. And it's important that we understand all that's happening in Wi-Fi back from the late 90s to today. To today. And you will see that there's this 802.11 and you might see G or 802. 2.11n, 802.11, and then you see kind of AC. And effectively, all of these bits here after the 11 means different versions of Wi-Fi. So that means they got different speed, they operate at different um, frequencies on the spectrum. And it's kind of, it's important to know kind of the differences between these. And no doubt that would be something that Cisco would love to test you on. So make sure that you understand the differences between these different wireless ranges, kind of understand the difference between a G and N and an AC, R you know, making sure you know the, the frequency they run at and the speed. And that, but ultimately what they actually means is that the IEEE, which is a task, which is a Institute of Electrical Engineering. And basically they have come up with a work group which is a group of engineers that define the standardization of technologies. And in this case, the work group of 802.11, which is what it was called, has defined the standards of wireless. And that's why we need to know all these different standards. So when you're going through your book and you're going through your Cisco documentation, make sure you understand the differences between all the 802.11 versions that are out there and unfortunately, something that you're gonna to have to memorize for the exam. So a few more things that we need to be aware of regarding the terminologies and overview of wireless. First of all, we need to understand what is an SSID, also referred to as a service set identifier. And it sounds complicated, but really it's just the name of the Wi-Fi. So you know when you go on your PC, uh, laptop, whatever, and I don't know how you connect, but most of them will have, let's say this is where the start button is, and you've got the toolbar down here. And then when you click on your wireless icon, you see a list of wireless uh, networks you can connect to. Or if you're on your mobile and you connect on the Wi-Fi icon and you see a list of networks, well, those are the SSID that is being advertised from access points to allow you to connect to it. Very simple. Now, depending on the access point, you can have multiple SSIDs. And why might you want multiple SSIDs? Well, 
A good way of thinking of an SSID is to think of one SSID equals one network. So a good example, let's say we have an access point. This access point has two SSIDs, has SSID 1 and SSID 2. Maybe they're called something more creative like corporate and guest. And effectively, you have a bunch of devices that can connect to SSID 1 and a bunch of devices that can connect to SSID 2. But what happens in the AP is the AP knows that when it sends the data up stream towards the switch, it encodes it in a different value. And based on that value, it's able to determine whether it's guest traffic and therefore not to trust it. And whether it's corporate traffic and whether to trust it. And the reason that's important is because as we're building our networks, wireless is the fundamental layer, if you like, the access layer, where we need to make sure it's secure because that is going to be very tricky to secure and which is why we have lots of different security mechanisms. So it's important that only, not only do we have the correct passwords to secure our wireless networks down here, but that as that traffic goes into our network further upstream to get to the internet or to get into corporate resources, that we have a method to identify which is trusted, which is not trusted, and what we can do with that traffic. And the way that's presented to our stations is via the SSID name. So that's why you might have a lot of SSIDs or why a access point may be advertising more than one SSID. We've also got this terminology of open Wi-Fi. Open Wi-Fi is sometimes free. So again, when you have your list of access points that you can connect to or networks that you can connect to, and they're all showing you the SSID, which is the name of the network, some will have obviously a padlock against it. Some will not have a padlock. And the ones that do not have a padlock are open networks that you can connect to and not have to type a password to use that network. However, some will require something called a splash page. And a good example of a splash page is a hotel. So when you go to a hotel and the Wi-Fi is free, you can click on the Wi-Fi and maybe it comes up with a website that kind of says, enter your name, your room number, and then you're ready, ready to go. Or maybe it says, you can use this Wi-Fi as long as you agree to these terms and conditions. Or maybe it says, you can use your Wi-Fi as long as you like us on Facebook. So it's free, kind of open, but you have to kind of go against their splash page through some sort of regulation or to ensure that kind of you're advertising their network. And lastly is how you secure your SSID or your wireless network. So again, back to that list of networks, we may see some networks with a padlock on it. And when you click on that network, it opens up and says, well, what's the password? And then normally at home, you know, on your router, you have a maybe a sticker on the bottom of the router that says to you, this is what the password is. Or maybe you set the password to something that you want to remember. But effectively, this level of security ensures that only the stations or devices that we want to connect to our network can connect to our network. And there's different uh, levels of encryption, like WEP or WPA, WPA2 free. And there's also different ways to authenticate using things like certificates, using things like two-factor authentication, using things like um, 802.1x, which is authentication based on things like the MAC address of the device. There's lots and lots and lots of security mechanisms. Now at the CCNA, we need to know the differences between these security mechanisms. So we need to know what is WEP versus WPA versus WPA2 from a high level point of view. Well, in this video, we're just looking at the terminology because we need to introduce ourselves into the idea that the network is gonna get encrypted. And in later videos, as the blueprint becomes more technical, we'll dive into the different levels of security and how they're different. So that's all we've got time for in this video. It was just kind of one video into Wi-Fi, into the introduction to carry on with the networking fundamentals. In this video, we talked about ad hoc, where we have PCs communicating directly without the need for an access point. Infrastructure and mesh, which allows multiple APs to connect in a single network. We said stations is effectively another word for end clients or host. 
which are basically devices that want to use the wireless network. RF is short for radial frequency, and depending on the type of network, i.e. the type of wireless 802.11, you would use one frequency or the other. And the frequencies give different capabilities. One allows you to connect further away, one you have to be closer to the access point. And then we had a quick discussion of the different encryptions through the use of WPA, WEP, and what open Wi-Fi actually means. I hope this video has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing. And if it has been, please do like and subscribe.